Hi, so in this video, I'm going to go ahead and present a few examples of how to use the sliders in my open mom in addition to representing air, shaded area. So um, the two things that we need is um, the problem itself and probably a calculator. You may be using um, Desmos, Minitab, or Excel, but in any case, um, this will demonstrate how to use kind of the sliders and understand how to represent your work on your paper with my open math. So here they just want us to sketch a region in between two z scores. So we can see that the probability is between negative 2.6 and 0.3. So because the z is sandwiched between two values, we will not shade left of a value, but between two values. So you can see the cursors um, on the graph that shade are um, not the answer, right? Like negative one and a half and 2.5. So we can know, we know that negative values are on the left of zero, positive values are on the right. So negative 2.6, these values on the Z, on the X axis are Z scores, they're standardized. That's the best thing about Z scores. And so we're going to slide it not there, but towards past negative two and go all the way to see negative 2.6 and then all the way up to 0.3, which is pretty far from 2.5. And we can see that all the z-scores in this problem on in my open math are to the tenths place. So when we now um, go to the second problem, so I mean to finish the first one, we can see that 2.6 and negative 2.6 and 0.3 match the values in the probability. Now here is a little bit different. They're telling you that they want you to find the z-score that corresponds to a left area, which is less than. I know it's left because of that less than symbol. It points it points to the left. So that's how I, I as a student, I always remembered that. I'm like, oh yeah, less than means to the left of zero. Greater than is pointing to the right, so it's the right of zero. So because it's less than pointing to the left, we're looking for an area that's to the left, but 0.45. A nice rule of thumb is to recall that when um, the z-score is at zero, the area on either side is 50%, right? Because it's 100% area split in half is 50%. But we could see that 0.45 represents 45%. So I could see here even if I'm going to shade to um, the left, that 45% is not 50% or beyond, right? So it's not going to be, the z-score I'm going to look for is not going to be positive because that would exceed 50%, which is much larger than the area that we need, which is 45. So I know that if I'm at 50%, I need a shade to the left. That means that this area, 45% is somewhere in here and the z-score that I calculate should be negative. Okay, so I just want us to use a little bit of analytical skills when we're doing this because that's really important is how do we dig deep, you know, dig a little deeper. I do know that 45% or 0.45 is a little close to 50%. So I do imagine that it's somewhere in between negative one and zero, but it should be negative. So anytime we want to do area to left, we want to shade left to the value and let's go ahead and find that z-score. We have our calculator and when we, we know when we go from a z-score to an area that when we go to the distribution list, second vars gives us distribution, we always use normal CDF. But if we are given an area and want to go back to the z-score, that's the reverse operations, right? Inverse. So um, we're going to do number three. So you can either click three or scroll down to three. Either way it works. The area we're looking for is given to be 40.45, so I'm going to go ahead and write, type that in. And the area is going to be to the left. Once again, I expect this area to be, I mean, the z-score to be negative and pretty close in between negative 1 and 0. Okay, so sure enough, it's between negative 1 and 0, and it's negative 0.125, blah, blah, blah. However, again, the z-scores, if you, if you move this cursor along, you see that the decimal only goes one decimal place to the tenths place. So we're going to go ahead and round this to the tenths place. So 
the one is the tens place, the two is the test digit, that's less than five. So that means that we're going to leave it as negative 0.1. So if I go to negative 0.1 right there, and I can go ahead and hit submit and notice the green check mark. So both are correct. Um, so let's do one more just for fun. Um, we'll do a greater than, if I can find one, there we go. Um, so here, um, here is a z-score that's going to be greater than negative 0.9. Notice it's a greater than, the point is pointing to the right. So I know area will be right of the value. And then I can move this cursor along. It's not negative 1.5. I'm looking for negative 0.9. So here we go. I think I went too far. 8, 9. There it is. So I can see that this value matches that z-score. So that's done. Now, if I want to sketch the region that corresponds to an area of 0.2 shaded to the right, right? That greater than symbol, shaded to the right, 0.2. Don't forget that um, if I'm going to shade to the right of the value, if it's beyond the halfway mark, I assume it's more than 50%. I can see that here it's 0.2, which is is 20%, which is much less than 50%. So my z-score will not be over here on the left side negative, This because this would be beyond 50%. So I know my z-score will be over here, it will be positive, and 0.2 is kind of like halfway, right, like somewhere here between, you know, it's ha it's around half of 50%. So I assume it'll be half as much. So right of the value 0.2, which is not more than 50%, it's going to be over here and it'd be a positive z-score. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to that menu in our calculator, second bars, which is the distribution list, and go to inf norm. There we go. And then the area they give us is 0.2. So I'm going to go ahead and just put 0.2 in there. 0, 1 is the standard um, values for the standard curve, which is the mean is 0 and the standard deviation is 1. And I'm shading to the right. So enter and paste and enter at 0.84. So it's going to be over here now we only get to the tenths place so eight is the tenths place and four is the test digit it's less than five so we leave it as 0.8 so let me move this from 0.9 to 0.8 and there we go and we can go ahead and submit and notice the green check marks so i hope this helps you with doing this types of problems in the calculator as in addition to my open math and using those cursors to shade and recognizing the finer details, like how my open math, the my open math gives the z-score to the tens place, but our calculator gives us many digits. So we just have to take what's you know the data that's given to us from our technology and adapt it to what's in my open math. And this is a technique that you'll use throughout anyways your career when doing statistics, because you're always taking you're running stats through the software, but then you have to kind of bring it back and, and say, well, how would the public interpret this? So we're always kind of doing that. So get used to the toggle. And um, I just hope this helps you with these types of problems.